The recent morning Russia bomb that killed more than 70 people at a Nigerian bus station on the outskirts of the capital Abuja on Monday has raised concerns about the spread of an Islamist insurgency after the deadliest attack yet on the city. Just who are these Islamist insurgents who have waged a bloody war in Nigeria and what do they stand for? The Boko Haram is an Islamist jihadist militant movement that aims at establishing a pure Islamic state ruling by the Sharia law, thus putting a stop to what is deemed as westernization. Established in 2002 in Maiduguri, the Islamist militants spent nearly seven years consolidating its base and spreading its disdain for Western education and government corruption in northern Nigeria. The group launched military operations in 2009. They are said to have intensified their attacks after their leader, Mohammed Yusuf, was killed in police custody the same year following a police raid. This resulted in reprisal attacks on the police that spread to four states. The group went on to stage more audacious attacks in 2011 in different parts of Nigeria, brewing tensions between Muslims and Christians. These attacks included the UN and police headquarters in Abuja. The Nigerian army launched a major offensive in May 2013 against the group, deploying thousands of troops in the north and launching aerial bombardments of suspected Boko Haram hideouts. President Goodluck Jonathan also issued a decree ordering soldiers to arrest people at will and take over buildings suspected of housing fighters. More than 1,500 people have been killed by the Boko Haram fighters this year alone. Now, for more analysis, we're now joined live here in studios by Jonathan Hamaka, an Nairobi based international security expert specializing on counter terrorism. Thank you for joining us tonight. So, why has it become so difficult for Nigerian, uh, Nigerian authorities to contain Boko Haram? Yeah, listen, uh, I think anytime you allow a terrorist faction to live within your country, even perhaps in their early stages, uh, maybe because they're not violent, they're not hurting people, uh, it can become incredibly dangerous. What will happen in almost every case is that they will grow to a point to where they're a force to be reckoned with. And when this occurs, it is almost always impossible uh, to fix the problem overnight. And that's what we're seeing currently uh, happen in Nigeria. Right. So is the current strategy by the government working or what needs to change in order for the Nigerian government to actually get rid of this group? Sure. Uh, the Nigerian government has recently issued uh, kind of a statement. They want to take a soft approach to terrorism. Uh, it's not likely that this is going to work. Uh, what you need is involvement from the international community uh, to help solve the problem uh, and perhaps uh, e even from uh, the whole of Africa kind of coming together as one to sit down and discuss what their options are as it relates to terrorism, not only in Nigeria, but uh, throughout Africa. Right, and speaking of, there's been reports uh, indicating that Boko Haram is also operating from other countries such as Niger, Cameroon. Um, has the international uh, community or other countries, for instance, in the region, paid enough attention to this possible threat in the region? Uh, they have not. Uh, what, what you see in the international community when you had countries in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, various places fighting uh, the perceived war on terrorism, the growth of terrorism uh, that was allowed to spread in Africa is reaching a point uh, that may prove to be disastrous uh, on levels beyond any kind of uh, imagination. Mm. This is obviously an extremist group using religion, of course, uh, to, to fight its cause. And it's not a unique case to Nigeria. We've been seeing other threats such as this across the continent. So how then can the continent best deal with such a threat? I think it's time. I think it's actually past time that African, uh, the countries and the leaders come together as one collectively for maybe a, a counterterrorism summit. And they sit down and they, and they talk about what are we going to do to solve this problem? And, and I, like I said, I think it's past time that this happens. They also need to involve the international community uh, so they can try to, to combat this issue uh, collectively because trying to do it by yourself uh, many times will fail. So if they can come together collectively uh, I think they can uh, better solve the issue. All right. Jonathan Hamaka, thanks very much for those <laughs> insights.